Oh, hello everybody. Um, welcome back to Audio Weaver Sessions. Again, I'm Emerson from Dandel. Um, you will see in my screen right now, I already opened Audio Weaver and I'm still connected to one of uh, Danville's boards and it's one of our crossover boards. So um, the previous Audio Weaver session, we were talking about IIR filters. So for, for this session, we're gonna be talking about FIR filters. It's the other cousin. Um, what's great about IIR filters is that with as simple as five numbers, uh, the DSP, you know, you can do something with those five numbers and it's doing something in to, uh, within your signals. FIR uh, filters have a different set of uh, properties from IIR filters uh, and we won't get into the theory on that but this is more of like how you use um, those kind of filters for uh, within Audio Weaver. You, it will require people to have uh, a way to generate the filter co coefficient. So there will be some software out there that you'll be using. Today I'm going to be trying to focus on uh, two kinds of F FIR filters that might be of interest to you. Okay, so the first one, since we're connected to the Danville board, I'm going to minimize the, the server. Uh, we will, you'll see this server because we want to show something later on, particularly on the usage of the computing power and memory. So as a short review, the first bar is how much of the compu computation power that your design is consuming. And the other three bars are how much memory um, is being consumed. So I'm gonna minimize this for the meantime. And for our demo today, we're gonna be showing, just like in the previous session, we're gonna make a, we're going to tie off the inputs and outputs of the hardware temporarily. Um, and we're just going to focus how one use, uses this um, FIR module. So uh, how I got to this picture is if, if you uh, just type in FIR, I just simply drag one of these modules in there. Um, so you notice that the number of taps is 31 over here. So for my demo, initial demo here, we're gonna look at the inspector and look at the arguments. I'm placing 201 taps. To load my 201 taps, I'm gonna preload a bunch of numbers I generated before. And I'm gonna select this guy and, and hit import. And these are the numbers within that filter all the way to element 201. Okay, close that. And basically it's a low pass filter for simplicity. I'm gonna make our generator go from a low frequency and we're gonna watch the level. So that's still good and it's gonna start to do something around a thousand hertz and we need to go up a little and and it's starting to attenuate okay so it's a low pass filter not an aggressive one but low pass filter nonetheless i'll put it there okay now uh, i'm gonna stop this and I'm going to open another design where it's the same set of uh, construct. I, it's the same drawing except for I change this module right here. So again, if I typed in FIR over here, and this is the first one we dragged, and this is the second one that I want to try. It's a long FIR filter. So if you, if I go click help for this, you will see a brief description of how it's, what it does. So the one thing to think about this is using filter bank processing. And the keyword here, it allows much more filters to be implemented on it. Basically it's claiming 
it computes things more efficiently so in this in this video we're trying to assess that okay so to to use this we have to let's look at the server uh, the block size is 32 so I'm gonna put that number here I'm gonna put the same amount of taps that uh, I've been using on the other one the previous one and I'm gonna load the same coefficients so I'm gonna pick the same file 201 taps Let's, uh, import yep close and let's see the meter again I remember it starts to do something around 3,000 and keeps on going down. Oops, that's 400. That looks good. Now, so it appears to be it it appears to be doing its work, but let's look at the Audio Weaver server. Okay, so it's saying with this simple design for 201 taps, this is consuming 45% and some memory now let's stop that and i'm gonna select the first one which has the same fir filter same taps but we're using the time convolution one so i'm gonna hit play hit go hit build <laughs> and then let's look at the server oh look at that this implementation only uses 23 percent and less memory okay so um, I'm gonna stop that so the next thing I want to try what happens if I want to compare the two filters with a bigger uh, amount of um, FIR taps so I have another set of filter that's a thousand fifty seven it's still a low-pass filter uh, I'm gonna change the argument here to 1057 hit enter load from a file and this is this file right here import yep well, it has all the way to 1057 I'm gonna close that and then let's just build that and see if it still does its job 2000 it's it's a more aggressive filter so as soon as so it seems it's doing its job but now the server is saying at the 1057 taps the this filter which is the direct convolution one consumes 56 point seventy three percent on the MIPS so let's see what happens if I use the other design uh, and I have to match the argument so again I'm gonna put 10057 here and I have to load the same filter and let's build it And let's make sure it's doing something. Um, eight. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now let's see what the uh, Audio Weaver service says. This one only consumes forty-eight point nine percent. Now. For the same filter this long fir filter when it only had 200 taps it was it was consuming 44 percent and then when it jumped to 1057 it jumped to 40 49 percent in contrast to the other one this uh, direct convolution one when it had 200 taps it was consuming 23 percent and then uh when it jumped to a thousand taps it went all the way to 57 uh, 56.7 so we can see that the long fir module does implement 
um, efficiencies given that it's computing for a, a uh, for a longer filter compared to the direct convolution one so I'm gonna try one more thing what if because I remember I made one more filter what about increasing the taps one more time so I had a, another filter here it's a thousand four hundred twenty three taps okay uh, where is that thing this guy again this is the long FIR filter so let's see what happens yep this one's a little bit more aggressive than the previous one so so that works now let's look at how much it consumes so this one jumped with that 400 tap uh, increase it only jumped to 50.62 previously it was running at 48% for a thousand taps, a thousand fifty-seven taps, and when it was two hundred taps, it it was only consuming forty-four percent. So you can you can really feel uh, its advantage as you go up in the filter tap quantity. So the longer the filter, uh, you can feel that if it, uh, that it's it's a better choice given a particular um, filter length. Now, just for comparison, if we go to the direct convolution one, again, we have to change, change the, the filter length and load the same coefficients. Select that guy, import, go. And let's make sure it's doing something that we expect. Yep, that sounds correct. By the way, all the all the filters I calculated here are low pass filters around a thousand hertz. So, are we ready to look at the consumption here? <laughs> let's see. Oh wow, look at that! It's it jumped all the way to seventy one percent. So we can see here that the time convolution direct time convolution filter which is this module right here as you increase the filter length you know you it's almost proportional to what the dsp will be computing directly on mips and i'm sure memory also matters but you see um it's okay if that's the only thing you want to do with this with this board but I'm sure there are other things you want to do with the signal processing so that this this video just shows that uh, people get to select depending on what they're trying to do with the with the product that uh, the choice of the particular module in this case for FIR modules matter because it's <laughs> we can see the trend that when we went to the long FIR filter. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you in that one. Uh, it, uh, as we increase the filter length, um, the MIPS barely moved. So that's all I got for today. Thank you for spending your time and watching this short video. And if you have questions and if you want to reach us, kindly uh, go to our website at danvillesignal.com and there's going to be a tab there called uh, Talk to Us uh, so you can reach us all for your DSP needs. So thank you very much.